Hello, and welcome back to Lorna Whiston Schools podcast, the place where we connect with parents from around the globe to share experiences on a variety of topics. We are a leading school and have been based in Singapore for over 40 years. We specialize in developing a lifelong love for learning, and our focus is on working with our parents to develop their children's 21st century skills, transforming them into the talented, critical thinkers of tomorrow. I am your host, Lori Borman, and head teacher of English Enrichment. And today, I am delighted to have with me Rose Griffiths, who is Deputy Head of English Enrichment. We will be talking about how you can make learning fun for your children at home. Rose, it's a real pleasure having you here today with me. Thank you, Laurie. It's lovely to be here today. And thank you very much. Rose, I know you've been teaching for many years. I know. Too many. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say I've been teaching for many more than you. And when you get this many years in, Rose, we really don't. I know I don't. For, I for sure don't want to let people know how old I really am. <laughs> you know, but um, and I never want to give away my age. But thankfully, the children that I teach today still think that I'm only two years old. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Rose, um, with all your years of experience, I just really want to ask you, what activities do you think parents can do around their homes to help with their child's language development? Well, I think the first thing I have to say, which might seem the most obvious thing that parents can do at home is talk and listen to the children. Um, often we get busy and the children, they speak to us, um, but we listen, but we don't always hear what they have to say. A message comes on the phone or we are distracted, we don't respond, or if we do respond, it's a quick response. It's broken, it's functional, um, but it's not a good depth of language. And for children to develop, a good depth of language, they need to hear good language. What they say, used to say about computers, garbage in, garbage out. And <laughs> what we put into our children is what we get out. So when you communicate with your children, try, try to make it good quality time, good quality language and a good quality input so that the child can hear good language and that's what they can use. And we've got so much time with our children at the moment. Um, so especially at home. So this is a good time when we can play with the children. So if you have opportunities, sit and play with your children. I often sit with the children in class. And one way of feeding in language is actually verbalizing what I'm doing. So it's very practical, practical because you've got the objects with you and the toys. And you help to reinforce language. So basically, I talk through what I'm doing. Maybe I'm twisting something. And I'll say, oh, I'm twisting this. So I'm building up that language. And they can see what I'm doing. And, I, and they can hear the word that goes with that language. Um, when they're playing, doing role play. So children love to act. A role play. So dress up, use them voices, them strange voices when you play with them. Extend their play. Children love it when adults join in their play. Sometimes it's good to watch them play and watch what they're doing and then just join in when you feel it's a time that you can extend that language. Sometimes you might be guiding the play, um, but just sit with them, have fun. Um, play means sitting down, sharing the toys, playing with them. Play can also mean like playing games with the children. Games such as I Spy. I used to play I Spy when we were in the car or when we were traveling somewhere. I Spy with my little eye, something beginning with B. I think it was uh, to keep us occupied. <laughs> that is right. We did the same thing in the car. Absolutely. We always looked at the license plate in front of us. And then we always had to try and think of words that began with those letters as well. So, yeah, fantastic. Yeah. And things like even when we were very young, we used to travel in the car counting Christmas trees at Christmas. So we used to it used to keep us occupied and so busy um, playing with tongue twisters as well in the car 
pizza pet to pickle pepper. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fun one. <laughs> It used to drive my dad mad sometimes, but (laughs) (laughs) it kept us occupied and we were working on playing with language. For older children, sometimes playing with language, we can use things like word searches, crosswords, Scrabble, language games, reading riddles. um, So they can read a riddle. uh, Also reading rhymes as well. So children... If any opportunity to read and react to that reading is an opportunity to build up language. Treasure hunts, hide things around your house, leave little clues. They can read the clues and go finding things around your house. Yes, Uh, that's a great way as well. You even learn those prepositions that children do struggle with, especially in the younger years, Rose. Fantastic. Definitely. And learning, learning words from songs. So I spent a year, I would say years, several years, learning the words to songs. And I still remember them words now. Even when I start singing now, my husband says, how do you remember all the words? <laughs> I used to read and learn them and practice them words. So songs, storybooks, um, encouraging children to listen to stories and just enjoy the stories, but not just watching them. And not just reading them themselves, but actually just listening to story tapes, mm-hmm. uh, because it's a good way of children just taking in language and focusing on that listening. And what they hear is what will come out, what they will use, the language they will use. Other things we used to do, I remember, and they're great things to work on, board games. Sometimes oh. I think I feel like board games are underused nowadays. They are, and they're such great family time, Rose. Yeah, just sitting there and just being able to share. Children learn how to play together. They learn how to take turns. They might learn counting, counting around the board. They might, so they're learning numbers as well. Um, They might have to read clues for the board game. And so again, they have to read clues and then respond to them. So that's learning how to read and understand comprehension skills. Yes. Um, Definitely learning to deal with losing. Um, many children find it can find it quite difficult to lose and being able to cope with losing and also being a good winner because sometimes right. it's children find want to shout about their winning and sometimes that's always not always a great thing when you've got somebody who's lost. So being able to see things from each other's point of view. So developing that empathy through yes. games. Yes, that is so important as well, Rose. Yeah. Also strategies, games like Monopoly, chess, Mm. drafts, dominoes. They have to learn them strategies, how to work together, how to plan and devise strategies for logical thinking. Mm. These are all really important skills for children, planning, prediction, inferential thinking, all the skills that they need, but they learn them through having fun. Absolutely. And it also helps build up their concentration skills as well. Definitely. Definitely. Especially games like chess, where you've really got Mm. to think about what you're doing and you've got to plan and you've got to strategize, really build up them skills that develop that higher thinking, higher level Mm. of thinking. But also children have fun. And it's good to play work, play games with mom and dad and to see mom and dad sometimes lose. (laughs) <laughs> my dad my dad never liked losing. <laughs> right, right. Absolutely. Then, yeah, that is right. And all the language that is going around of how, how to become a good winner and, you know, how we all have to lose. Absolutely. Yeah. I'll never forget the talk my dad gave me. You know, Lori, someone's always got to win a game and someone's got to lose. Yes. You know, but if you lose, at least, you know, you've got to work harder next time to become that winner. <laughs> yeah. I remember one of my students used to say, her dad always said, losing makes you stronger and it makes you stronger inside because if you can cope with losing, you can cope with anything. Right, right. But just that family time, that talking and sharing and having fun playing the games, it's such quality time that you can have with your parents, your grandparents, anybody in your household. So it's a really lovely time and having that fun I remember that now. 
obviously, Laurie, you remember them times now. So right. that's what the children will remember, them sure. happy times, family times. So building right. up them family experiences is really good. Absolutely. Rose, you got so many wonderful ideas about how to build up that language, you know, in our children. Um, as you were talking, I also thought about, you know, imaginary play. I think children always do enjoy having that stuffed animal or that imaginary friend and being able just to talk to that yeah. character and whether it's in their mind or they're verbalizing it, you know, out loud, letting that child do that is helping that language aspect because they're practicing that language in their own mind, you know, and many of you, probably many of you all have a green thumb. Unlike me, I don't have a green <laughs> thumb. Um, but you all have some plants, I'm sure. I think it would be a great activity is to have your child adapt, uh, adopt a plant in your house and being able to communicate with that plant on a daily basis. I bet many of you would be surprised at how well that plant is going to grow because it's going to feel the love from your child as it's talking to it. So give it a try. I'd love to see your plants. Rose, that takes me on to the next question that I'd like to ask you today. As you know, Rose, it is life skills are very important to us as well. And here in Singapore, uh, as teachers and educators and parents, sometimes we realize we can't always give our children the experiences that we want. And sometimes they don't get it at enough. Let's brainstorm some activities that we could help children learn about on life skills. What things can we do? Well, I think one of the main things I think about when I'm thinking about life skills is actually taking children to places, going to places. I always say to my parents, especially in the primary years, if your child has to write a composition on going to the beach or going to the wet market, then they, if they've been there and visited that place, then they can feel that place. They can smell, remember the smells that they smell. They have that emotional connection to that place. So life experiences, really, really important. The more they have, the more balanced their thinking is, the more they can describe their experiences, which goes into their writing. Um, and also that language development from them, life experiences as well. You read Absolutely. about where you go, you talk about where you go, that language is built up in a natural way. Uh, fortunately, at the moment, we can't go out so much. So we're looking at more indoor experiences as well. Um, so activities that can focus on life skills at home, things like arts and craft, because the experiences you have when you're making things and developing things and creating things, these activities might focus on reading and following instructions and sequencing. Activities like cooking. So you have to think about what comes first. You have to be able to multitask, really important skill. So for instance, if you made a simple Play-Doh, then simple Play-Doh recipe, you'd have to read the recipe. You might have to make a shopping list and go shopping. Um, so children can make shopping lists. Para, if their children are very young, they could use pictures to do this. They need to gather ingredients, which could in go, involve going shopping with their shopping list. Mixing and squashing things and mixing the ingredients together, good for building up fine motor skills, which children need for a good pencil grip. Good yes, pencil they do. Control. They do. Yeah. What I'm noticing today, Rosa, as an educator, is sometimes I think the children are doing too much time on the iPad and on the phone, mm -hmm. that they're not getting enough manipulative action with their fingers to build up those fine motor skills. So you're absolutely right. Yeah. They need to be really kneading dough and, and playing with it and baking, you know, used to be baking all the time and stirring things and even getting out and climbing, climbing on climbing frames, something the children aren't getting much of these days either. Yes, they're all them skills that can encourage children to grip and squeeze right. and squash sure. and build up that strength in that in the pencil grip. So yeah. at home, if you get the opportunity, make some Play-Doh. You can put right. food coloring in the Play-Doh. You can put glitter in the Play-Doh. And because you've made it yourself, it's only flour, 
water, little bits of oil and salt, mix it together. And then you can add the food coloring and make it change color. You can put glitter in and make it change texture, add some essence and make the smell change. For children, just being able to do that squashing and that playing, they make yes. a mess. Let right. them make a mess because they can <laughs> clean up afterwards. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Let them add some glitter to that too. The girls love the princesses. So they really enjoy putting glitter in that Play-Doh. <laughs> yeah. Get them rolling. It doesn't matter if there's no Play-Doh cutters because they right. use their hands to manipulate. Get them rolling into balls. Get them rolling into snakes. I often start by making a little snail with my children to teach them how to squash, how to roll. Um, and it, they just love it when they, once they get there, you'll find it's the quietest time that you have with your children. <laughs> they can sit there for hours and play with Play-Doh. <laughs> Give yes. them a pencil to make little dots on. Um, they can draw on their Play-Doh as well because it, you've just made it. It's flour, it's water. If it, once yes. they've played with it, you can throw it away and use some more, make some more. So yes. really, then baking skills and cooking skills, they're all about reading instructions, following instructions, all essential life skills. Besides these fun actual activities, children can also learn about tasks, doing tasks around the house. You'd be amazed. Children love helping adults. They love doing tasks in class. Who wants to give out the pencils? The, yes. All the hands are raised. They want to help the teacher. <laughs> and at home, they want to help you. So it's giving them that responsibility. The, it's amazing how many of my nursery children love wiping the table. So <laughs> we get a cloth, they wipe the table. They love that. It's they do. They do. Grow up. Absolutely. And primary too, I just taught a class and, and got a student in there that really does a lot of house chores and it's fantastic because she's able to communicate everything that she does around the home. Ask the other children, do they do that? And their heads are all shaky because I think a lot of times they're, they're, they're studying way too much, you know, in, in the books and doing prepping for their exams, but really they're learning a lot of life skills by doing household chores and learning how to collaborate and do things as a family um, and teamwork. So yeah. again, it's important that we give these children these opportunities as well to build on these long life skills. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Because I know some children get great grades, but they can't pack their bag. Right. So their bag's all over the place and they've forgotten things, but the, the grades are really good. So again, if their their organizational skills are really, really important for future success in life, um, but it also gives them that sense of responsibility and that awareness that they can look after themselves. And it builds up self-confidence because if yes. they're the only one that can't sort their things out, that can't pack their bags, then they feel that difference. Um, things like making sandwiches and cutting fruit are great skills for children to work on. Making their own sandwiches. They can get creative. They can design their own sandwiches, and then they can start making sandwiches for you and the family. And it becomes a fun task, not just a chore. It becomes fun and enjoyable. Um, also, it teaches them how to work with equipment, like yes. knives and sharp objects. Sure. Um, teaches them about responsibility. And when I teach my young children, my nursery two children, about using scissors, so with nursery two, I call my scissors the crocodiles. And the crocodiles bite. <laughs> so they know they cannot walk around the classroom with the crocodile's mouth open or it will bite their friends. Um, so sometimes we use role play to educate children about safety as well if they are very young. It helps because it's language that they understand. So just helping children to become independent be able to cut, be able to design, be able to do these little chores around the house and learning skills through real tasks. And you might not enjoy them tasks, but my, in my words, the children do. And they love that responsibility. And it teaches them to be responsible for themselves. They definitely do, Rose. That's great. Thank you so much, Rose. 
I've got another question for you, Rose. Can children build up their soft skills naturally by doing chores, helping around the house and doing family activities? Yeah. So as I've said, definitely those soft skills such as grit, adaptability, self-confidence, independence, self-management, cooperation, those skills are what they need to ensure they can work happily with others and deal with conflict and resolve problems with confidence. So these are the skills they learn by turn-taking. Um, they'll do turn-taking when they're speaking. They learn to share. So even doing a chore at home, I remember doing chores with my brothers and sister, and we all had our own tasks at home to do once we got home from school. Everybody had a task. Um, with my, my task was drying the dishes. My yes. sister used to have washing the dishes. I had to dry the dishes. My brother had to tidy them away. My other brother had to light the fire. That is um, so funny. That's funny you say that, Rose, because we had it in my household, too. However, my sister, I'll never forget, she always disappeared to the piano room and she just played the piano. <laughs> and she never got called back onto the task because my mom enjoyed listening to that piano play. <laughs> anyway, please continue, Rose. <laughs> I have to say all my siblings did their tasks. Um, <laughs> we worked together. Um, if somebody felt like we didn't want to do our tasks or we weren't feeling well, then the other ones would help them out and work together. So I think that working together, helping your siblings out, sharing them tasks, um, really, really important. It builds up that relationship with your siblings. Um, sometimes, like, if the siblings don't do the tasks, <laughs> then it might be you might work on dealing with that conflict <laughs> <laughs> absolutely that's right <laughs> and that is it that is another really important thing because you learn about cooperation and routines yep. yes. but you also have to learn to encounter conflict sure. and see if you can resolve that conflict on your own now, when I used to come home from school, my parents weren't there. They were at work. So I, my eldest sister was the one responsible for us. So <laughs> she was the one who had to deal with our conflict or we had to resolve the situation ourselves. And I think that's really important that children learn to respond to conflict and deal with it themselves. I think when children do lots of things together, so if adults are around, we can give them lots of praise for doing well. We can tell them what they've done well. We can help them understand right from wrong. Um, but when adults aren't around, sometimes they have to just fall down and pick themselves up. Okay. Absolutely. So, and I think and sometimes we spend so much time trying to help our children resolve arguments between themselves that we don't they don't learn their own natural problem, problem solving skills. And that's what children need to do. So the OM is a fabulous place to let them fall down, let them have an argument and let them learn to resolve their own arguments and learn to share and learn to, yeah, fall down. So it's okay. Children need to accept the word no. Yes, they need they to do. be able to do. But it helps them build up resilience. And resilience, I think, is one of mm. the crucial things children need to learn. Pa adults can help them reframe the word no, but I think they learn so much more on their own from wor yes. working together and <clears throat> arguing. So, uh, yes, I think giving children that chance to build up their soft skills is really, really important on their own. Just let them argue. Let them fall down let them build themselves up. Once they resolve problems on their own, they have build up confidence in themselves. They build up independence. They build up grit, resilience. They're the skills we're looking to build up in them. Yes. Rose, you have shared so many wonderful ideas today. And I think everybody's going to walk away from listening to this podcast and think, I haven't been doing that. I must be doing this. And I've never tried that. I should try that. Um, definitely so many great things. And parents, I think, will often think, yeah, I did that when I was a child, but I'm not giving that experience to my own child. Hmm. And yes, I want to do that. So again, I think everyone listening today with all these wonderful ideas, I certainly believe you're going to be extra busy now during the <laughs> June holidays. 
I'm not sure you're going to get it all in, but just remember giving your child these experiences is what is going to make them become better lifelong learners as well. And I also want to say, if you're going to let your child adopt a plant, which I hope you do, I really want to see pictures of that plant and see how well it's growing. So I will conclude there for today. I just like to say, thank you very much for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed hosting it. Do send us any questions you might have or share with us an encouraging story about how you have made learning fun for your children at home. <music>